Welcome to my channel. 1. Infighting between Angagua and Shiwenga factions frustrating eager investors. A European investor's phone rings in a Harare restaurant and it's good news. An $80 million construction deal has been agreed with the Zimbabwean government. All that's needed now is a central bank guarantee letter. It never arrives. President Emerson Angagua who took power when Robert Mugabe was removed in a de facto coup last November, has been trying to woo investors ahead of an election on July 30, a contest in which he is the narrow favorite. Angagua, a 75-year-old former ally of Mugabe, says he has already secured $15 billion of foreign investment, IQing from foreign multinationals, although these are mostly non-binding commitments. According to analysts from local financial advisory firms who reviewed the agreements, in May, General Electric said it would look at healthcare, power and transport in Zimbabwe, while Coca-Cola said it planned to make the country an export hub for juice and other products, and a source of raw materials. Most big companies however are waiting until after the election to make their move although already the atmosphere has changed since the fall of Mugabe whose nearly four decades in power brought a promising economy to its knees. Harare taxi drivers say they are hearing more foreign languages in their cabs, businessmen gather around laptops at restaurants, and the often sleepy international airport is buzzing with newcomers. But, so far, most are leaving frustrated and empty-handed. It's like the Wild West, the European businessman said, paying his bill in crisp U.S dollars to the delight of a waiter more used to the dreaded quasi-currency bond notes introduced in November 2016. After three days rushing between government ministries to get the deal done, the signed contract in his briefcase is useless since it lacks a guarantee from the central bank that he can access the dollars he needs to import equipment. Right, I better go deliver the bad news, he said rising to catch a taxi to the airport. Reuters spoke to more than 20 investors, ranging from multinationals to entrepreneurs, who are interested in entering Zimbabwe for the first time or in expanding their businesses there since Angagwa was sworn in. All express optimism about new opportunities in sectors from mining to telecoms, and financial services to construction, after a decade when China was the only big outside investor turn the needle. When these political changes happened, immediately there was positiveness returning to the economy, said Adrian de Lang, managing director at Omnia, a chemicals firm operating in Zimbabwe. The potential exists for Zimbabwe to really turn the needle. But investors also raised concerns about the election and infighting over facilitating investment between factions linked to Angagua and Vice President Constantino Shiwenga the army general who led the coup against Mugabe. The biggest obstacle is the chronic cash shortages that prevent businesses from importing the goods they need or repatriating the profits they hope to make, while portfolio investors can't get their money out of the stock market. After raging hyperinflation, Zimbabwe abandoned its own currency in 2009 in favor of the U.S. dollar. But a widening trade deficit and lack of foreign investment have led to currency shortages. For ordinary Zimbabweans this means winter nights sleeping outside banks in the hope of withdrawing the few dollars that are left, sometimes $20 in coins, often nothing. The crunch wasn't solved by the introduction of the bond notes which officially trade at parity with the U.S. Dollar, but have already depreciated to 1.60 to the dollar. Banking sources say the central bank has a backlog of $600 million in unpaid imports but less than $200 million cash, and the situation is getting worse. The Reserve Bank declined to comment for this story. Thank for watching. Please, subscribe and share. See you again.